Hello, it's Saturday, and welcome to the big magazine from Big News. I'm Lee Bannister, and I'll be here with you over the next hour to guide you through our relaxed, regular look around our area to see what's happening, whether you're in Birmingham, Solihull, the Black Country. This is your big magazine. Oh yes, welcome to your Saturday edition of The Big Magazine. Now in a few moments, we're going to be seeing what's been pinned up on this week's Community Notice Board. We'll also find out who's been featured in this week's Charity Focus. Des and Gary will be on hand to tell us what's on for Saturday. Carl Jones will take a pew in the auditorium for his regular look at the silver screen. Tom Wilkinson from Doorstep History will look back through the years. Johnny Doom will be here with his music news. Thomas Russell will tell us what's on his bookshelf this week. And then we'll have a look in the postbag too. How will we have time for it all? Who knows, you'll have to wait and see because it's all coming up within the pages of Saturday's Big Magazine. <laughs> so then, <laughs> let's have a look at what is happening in your community as we take a look at the da -da -da -da. Community notice board. You can tell you're back. <laughs> <laughs> have a nice time away? Yes, it was very good, thank you. Good, good. Now, if you have some uh, news you'd like to feature, then give us plenty of notice and you could be telling people all across the area what's going on. If you want to get in touch, we'll tell you how you can in a few minutes' time. Certainly will. Now, the St Matthew's Walsall Community Day is happening on Saturday the 11th of June. It's a celebration of the town and its people as well as the Queen's 90th birthday. I knew it. I missed that. I missed that. <laughs> There's live music and entertainment, community groups and information, stalls, workshops and craft tents, face painting, donkey rides, a bouncy castle, plus food and refreshments from the vintage tea rooms. I wonder if there's wine. I, I don't know. <laughs> it being a, a church event, I'm not sure. Oh, and there's a red, white and blue fancy dress competition for the under 11s. Jesus drank wine. That is true, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's a historical <laughs> fact. Now they're getting local schools, organisations and the community involved in the event and they're hoping for great weather and a great atmosphere. I'm sure they will, based on the last couple of days. I hope so, anyway. <laughs> Entry is free and it's on Saturday the 11th of June from 10.30 until 3.30pm. It's at St Matthew's in Warsaw and that's in St Matthew's Close, not very far from where we're sitting at the moment. In fact, if my bearings are right, it's that way. Hello, St Matthew's! <laughs> I've got, yeah. <laughs> They'll be on the community notice board side. Um, anyway, uh, moving on, the ladies' social section of the Shellfield Male Voice Choir have arranged their annual concert at Pelsall Community Centre on Station Road in Pelsall for June the 11th. The choir will be singing a selection of songs to suit every taste and returning as guest artists this year are the local, du are the local duo Potamagan who delighted the audience last year. That's a tongue for that is. It is actually, Great yeah. name though. Oh, I love it, yeah. <laughs> now tickets for it are six pounds and they include light refreshments. So if you'd like to go along, all you've got to do is call 01922 682070 or you can get tickets on the door. So it's all on the evening of Saturday the 11th of June at uh, half past seven at the Pelsall Community Centre. Well, the countdown to this year's Black Country Festival is well underway. I'm sorry for any people that were watching that. You with your perfect speech as well. <laughs> It's well underway, I'm so excited, <laughs> and thousands of people are getting ready, including me, for the month-long festival throughout July, with events taking place across most of the towns in the area. Are you going along to one of the events? Yes, I always go to the Starbridge one. Yeah, all uh, right. Is that you having fun? <laughs> <laughs> there's no queen, there's no mayor, so this is me at Stourbridge Black Country Festival. <laughs> okay. Well, it all includes the Hales Owen Carnival on July the 2nd, the Stourbridge Carnival, where you'll be on July the 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to go to see that. Uh, the Great Black Country Road Run in Hales Owen on July the 3rd as well. And the Beer Festival at Briley Hill Civic Hall on July the 29th to the 31st. Also, Black Country Day itself is on Thursday, July the 14th. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're spinning something as a cowgirl or something. I love it. And uh, there'll also be activities in Dudley Town Centre on Saturday, July the 16th. I'll say there's no mayor, but the, the mayor will probably be there. Oh, yeah. So well, you know what you've got to do, haven't you? Oh, no, that's the Queen. I thought that was... What was my mayor? What? That, that was your mayor. The, the Queen is... Oh, oh, right, yeah. OK. Oh, OK, all right. <laughs> Honestly, you arrived for two weeks and it all goes well. Right. The festival is now in its third year and sparks a wave of pride across the black country. 
as you can see. Um, Honouring its history and celebrating the future. So for more information on events of the Black Country Festival taking place throughout July, you can visit www.black-country-festival.co.uk. We love the Black Country because we were both born there, it's true. <laughs> like it. Next, it's a big hello to Katrina Plum and all the guys at the watering trough here in Warsaw. Now, she's asked us to let us uh, let you know about some of the things they've got coming up soon. On the 11th of June, it's the Warsaw Punk Festival, and on the 25th of June, it's the Cider Festival. Then in July, on the 2nd, there's live music with 51 Stone. And then on the 23rd of July, they're celebrating their first year anniversary of taking over with Big Centre's very own Johnny Doom. Go Johnny Doom, yes. Now, Katrina says that each week there's a games night on Mondays, Red Tooth Poker on Tuesdays, Free Pool on Wednesdays. On Thursday, it's free jukebox and open mic every other week. Uh, you'll find rock DJs on Friday, Fridays and Saturdays, then another free jukebox on Sundays. So that's all at the watering trough on Abelwell Street in Warsaw. A voluntary group from Birmingham which manages the Holford Drive Community Sports Hub in Perry Bar has been honoured with the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service. The Queen again? <laughs> I was going to do my mare thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, the highest award for the voluntary group can receive in the UK. Yeah, the sports club is run by four clubs for four core sports. There's the Aston Boxing Club, Holford Drive Tennis Club, Continental Star Football Club and Continental Cricket Club. Lincoln Moses, MBE, Keith John and Diane Sawyers, trustees from the Holford Drive Community Sports Hub, attended a garden party at Buckingham Palace. On the 19th of May 2016, where they met the Queen and other winners of this year's award. That's so great. It is. I'd love to go to Buckingham Palace. Well, no, you never know, you never know. One day. One day. <laughs> and what will you do when you meet the Queen? <laughs> 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 Love it. Now, Holford Drive Community Sports Hub is one of 193 charities, social enterprises and voluntary groups to receive this prestigious award this year. The Queen's Award for Voluntary Service is the highest award given to local volunteer groups across the UK to recognise outstanding work in their communities. The awards were created in 2002 to celebrate the Queen's Golden Jubilee and winners are announced each year on the 2nd of June, the anniversary of the Queen's coronation. So it is really quite special, isn't it? Yeah. Hoffer Drive Community Sports Hub will receive the award from the Lord Lieutenant of Birmingham later this summer. Congratulations. Yes, Eddie. well done. <laughs> Now this year's Bands on the Beacon event on the 3rd of July will see local performers Hidden Skies donating their time to help local children's charity Acorns Children Hospice. Known for their heavy edged alternative rock sounds, the headline act will be showing their softer rock band nature, volunteering on the charity's store when they are not performing on the day. Lead singer Alexander Lenehan has a personal association to the charity through his mum who works for Acorns in the Black Country, based in Warsaw and Nice. Now also appearing are the interpreters with an eclectic sound that's described as a mix of pop, rock, soul, rhythm and blues and punk with a big helping of ska and reggae. Do you think that covers everything? Yeah. I like the sound <laughs> of that. Now the band consists of Tom Bradshaw who is the lead vocalist and who plays guitar and harmonica, Dean Jones on guitar and vocals, Kieran Baker on bass and vocals and Rob Briggs on drums. This year other bands have signed up to perform on the big day include Sunday 44, Pleasure House and Dinky, live music and stunning 360 degree views make Bands on the Beacon a unique experience. Sounds quite cool. Now as we said, Bands on the Beacon is all in aid of local charity Acorns Children's Hospice who offer a range of specialist services to children and their families across the Midlands. Now it costs Acorns more than £9 million every year to continue providing its care and it relies on fundraising for the majority of this amount. Now in the last year Acorns has supported over 800 children and more than 1,030 families including those who are bereaved. So Bands on the Beacon is on Sunday the 3rd of July 2016 at Bar Beacon and if you'd like any more information then you can call 01922 653344 or have a look online at cms.warsaw.gov.uk forward slash bands underscore on underscore the underscore beacon. There we go, easy. Now, Bernardo's ongoing work to transform the lives of children and young people will be the focus of an open event at the Birmingham Council House Chambers in Victoria Square on Tuesday, 7th of June. Professionals and members of the public are being invited to the information event to hear how the children's charity continues to support the most vulnerable children, young people and families in its 150th anniversary year. 
There will be personal accounts from people connected to the charity, including Sheffley Hollis, a lady fostered by Bernardo's as a child, as well as colleagues from Bernardo's Children's Services in Birmingham and Sue Howard from our local legal partners, Quality Solicitors Davison's. There are two events during the day. The first is at half past ten in the morning and the second begins at 5.30 in the evening. And both events include a free guided tour of the chambers. Bernardo staff will be on hand to talk about opportunities to use your skills to help fundraise in your local community and to show you how gifts left to Bernardo's in wills, no matter how large or small, can impact on the charity's work in the future. Sue Howard from the Birmingham firm Quality Solicitors Davison's will offer free confidential personal advice about making a will and explain the Bernardo's will scheme. To book your free place, places at the event, please contact Dylan Carroll on 07885201177 or email dylan.carroll at bernardo's.org.uk. So that's what we found on our community notice board for this week. Would you like to tell people across the area what's going on? Then get in, just, in touch. <laughs> <laughs> just make sure you let us know in plenty of oh, time. Oh, yes. You can email us via the postbag. That is postbag at bigcentre.tv. Send us a message on social media at bigcentre.tv. Or it's your turn to do it this week. Or you can pop a letter. <laughs> in the post to the Community Notice Board um, at Big Centre 14 Lower Hall Lane, Warsaw, WS11 RL. <laughs> Go! <laughs> And of course, we'll have more for you at the same time next week. OK, now it's time for this week's Charity Focus. And as I said, if you know of a local charity or a good course that would benefit from some good local exposure on the telly, then please do get in touch and I'll tell you how later on in the show. Here's Taffy. This week, we're doing things a little differently. We're going to take a look at what the next generation has got to offer in music and art. Thanks to art centers like Art Tricks, youngsters not only can dream, but actualize their potential. Welcome to Charity Focus. This week, it's Art Tricks. The center boasts a 300 seat auditorium, dance studio, meeting rooms, and gallery. With over 200 specialist film screenings, 12 exhibitions and many more local community projects round your corner. Uh, we're really looking at our artistic and engagement profile, provision and ambition. We're looking at developing our audiences, particularly amongst young people and children because we really need to look at who are the next gener generation of artists, of audiences and managers. So we're really going to focus on the next 10 years of getting young people here into our trip. the saxophonist and finalist in Britain's Got Talent started his career at the very same art centre. I caught up with him to find out a little bit more. It's wonderful to see your career going from strength to strength from Britain's Got Talent. So I'm just wondering, since you started in an art centre, how do you feel art centres are important for other youths within the region? Well, uh, as you know, um, the, the young people of today, they need someone, they need places to perform. And places like this are just amazing opportunities for them. Um, I mean, I'm, my daughter's only very young, and she came tonight and saw this for the first time. And she's so excited about the possibility that you know, you know, one day she could actually perform here. So it's uh, just a great pa platform for youngsters. <laughs>
However, part-funded art centers like Artrix cannot function without the vital support volunteers give. I caught up with one of them. It's wonderful. We've got a team of 65 volunteers here. Um, they do a variety of jobs. They work behind the bar, they do the gardening, they stuff groceries into envelopes, they usher, vast variety of jobs. They help uh, our uh, education officer with courses for children in the summer holidays. Lots and lots of things volunteers do here. So how important is it for people to get involved and volunteer their time and services to places like Artrix? Well, we couldn't operate Artrix without them, uh, certainly. Um, and we've been going for 11 years. We've got quite a few people who've been Artrix volunteers for the whole of the time that's been open. But we're, we're having a new uh, sort of recruitment drive to get more and more volunteers because we need ushers, lots and lots of different aspects, so we're broadening all the time. Though the Arts Centre is actually run by some funding within the West Midlands, there is still a requirement for the management, which is a charity trust, to find volunteers to take time and put time within the organisation to make it work. Is that you? What ways are you looking for people to volunteer? Well, we're broadening it, as I said. We'll be asking volunteers if they have any other ideas or any skills that they'll be able to offer which we haven't asked them. We've just had a volunteer survey asking them exactly that. So we've got to you know, collate all the answers from that and hopefully we'll get some more ideas of things that can help. I think you've done amazingly well thank and thank you. you so much for all the hard work you and all the other volunteers have been providing here at Artrix and elsewhere in the region. Thank you, we couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much. They are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. It's Saturday's big magazine. Plenty still to come, including Carl's film news, Wilco's history lesson, Johnny's music news, and Thomas Russell will offer his unique view of the literary world. Uh, that's all before I jump into the postbag once more. It's all later on in the show. But first, here is Des and Gary with a look at what's on for Saturday. Taking place at Senelis Park. Do we know where that is? Uh, I do know it and I'm just trying to think. It'll come back to me. Right, Keep going. Okay. The Macmillan Cancer Support is staging the Urban Obstacle Race, Adrenaline Rush 2016. It's a minimum of 20 obstacles in each race, including a zip wire, a giant bull pit, and a gunge tank. <laughs> oh, sounds fun. Yeah. Entrants are guaranteed to have their stamina, strength and mental resolve put to the test at every turn. Mm. Macmillan has also launched Young Rushers that children over the age of 14 will be able to take part in when entering with a responsible adult. <laughs> <laughs> we won't be there. No, though. rules us out. The Birmingham 5K Young Rushers race will take place in the afternoon and will include a minimum of 20 obstacles featuring everything from an assault course, uh, plank warps, rope mazes, is to challenges including the giant slide and Adrenaline's Rush signature Leap of Faith. Mm. Oh, that sounds like it. Sounds good. And Senelis Park, I just can't place it. I know it, I just can't yeah. place we'll it. We'll let you know. We'll let you know okay. next okay. week. Google it. Google, yeah, Google it. Google it. Google it, yeah. Uh, there's a home and garden fair at the Seven Valley Railway. It's based at the engine shed in the visitor centre at Highley as well as a large selection of plants and shrubs. There'll be wines from the nearby uh, Hapenny Green vineyard. Have you been there? No. Fantastic. No. Hapenny no. Green. That's they've, got, they've got an airport there, didn't they? They, they have. have an it's airport. right next to it. Yeah. It's brilliant. Know, it's, yeah. it's still there, the airport. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you can't fly to Spain from there unless you no. own a plane. That's it's right. one of those little ones, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, beers from uh, Coverdale Brewery and uh, barbecue food available. Canal boat art and locally made home and giftware and cast iron cookware from the world famous Netherton Foundry will be on sale. And local band, The Straight Aces, will be providing plenty of fast-paced musical entertainment throughout the week. 
weekend. Yeah, South Rail, Rail, Sam Valley Railroad. It's good. It's good. Yeah. We used to go on that. Just take the kids on that Christmas run. Yeah. For like the Christmas. Yes, season. right. Yeah. Yeah. In Bewdley, the Rowing Club are holding their <coughs> annual pub and club regatta show. Uh, it's organised for the crews of persons with no or very little rowing experience, and it's more fancy dress based nowadays, with generally over 70 crews entering. Uh, as well as the races on the water, the day also involves the ergo rowing machine. That's that one where you sit down. I know. I do, I, every morning in the gym, I'm doing uh, that. I know, I've seen you. No I've problem. Seen you, yeah. oh. uh, a disco and a barbecue. It's very much a family day with fun to be had by all participants and spectators alike. And you nearly got through that without making a mistake. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That was really good for you. Yeah, yeah. Right. Ministry of Data is a data rave organised by Doink Co. Doink Co. Doink. Oh, Doink Co, yeah. And uh, Beat Freaks at Millennium Point from 8 to 11pm. Now, the event is designed to give young people a space to explore the EU referendum. That's a good idea. It's a platform to discover information in an engaging way and to extract insight from young people to understand their perspective and viewpoint. Very important that young people get involved and if they can vote, I'm not quite sure of the ages, they should because it's basically their future. The future Absolutely. It doesn't matter about dinosaurs like us. No. But anyway, it's very good. Yeah. Go, go too, too many of them have said, well, I, I'd vote, but I don't understand what's going yeah. on. Find out yeah. what's going on. Uh, gigs tonight, Dead Sea Skulls plus special guests, the Common Jets are at the Big Bull's Head in Digbeth. Faintest Idea and Jake and the Jellyfish play the Boar's Head in Kidderminster. Akamba in Shirley presents Big Jam Music Fest with 10 bands plus celebrity appearances of Boopsy Brown from yeah. X Factor okay. and celebrity chef Rusty Lee. Rusty? Do you remember her? Is <laughs> Rusty still about? <laughs> yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah, she's good fun, Rusty. Uh, good mate of mine, Russell Watson, is playing the Slade Rooms in Wolverhampton. And on the set day of the Lunar Festival over in Tanworth in Arden, local folksters Boat to Row are playing on the Bimble Inn. And here's Handsome Beasts. I'm talking about you and me. <laughs> Ticking cards move so tightly. Handsome beats, though short Do you like to indulge in a good film? Well, you're in good company because Carl Jones is here from our movie magazine show, The Big Picture. I think he's ready for us in the auditorium. Thanks very much, Lee. Well, it's that time of the week where we take a look at what's new at West Midlands cinemas. And once again, no surprise, I suppose, that being half term, there's plenty to choose from. Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling form an unlikely double act in a film called The Nice Guys. This one's the story of a mismatched pair of private investigators who are on the trail of an apparent suicide of a fading porn star. It's all set in 1970s Los Angeles. It's not exactly a smooth partnership, as you can see here. You're a private investigator? <clears throat> Look, there's 20 bucks in there, all right? Just take it. No, I'm not here for that, I told you. You and an old hired me. Yeah. If we can do this the easy way, we can do it the Glenn. hard way. Glenn. What? Lily Glenn, two ends. Old lady hired me to find her niece on Tuesday. You just gave up your client. I made a discretionary revelation. No, no, you just gave her up. I asked you one simple question. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You gave me all the information. I thought that's what you wanted. What? <laughs> now, I'm very sorry that you didn't get the message. <clears throat> I get it, I dig it. What about now? Give me your left arm. Huh? Your left arm, give me your left arm. This one. No! Yeah, come on. No! No! Right, look, when you're talking to your doctor, just tell him you have a spiral fracture of the left radius. No! No! Deep breath. No. If I have an apple. Ah. 
Well, Iron Man director Shane Black serves up a really energetic comedy thriller here. Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling are terrific together and you sense they really did get on well. There's a sort of lethal weapon kind of vibe going on and lots of great one-liners. Highly recommended, that one. Changing the mood, next up is Warcraft The Beginning. This is a film which opened on Monday. Peace in a kingdom called Azeroth is shattered when a portal opens to another dying world. And it means that these orc-like warriors are fleeing their dying home and they're trying to colonise another place. It's not long before everybody's getting very suspicious. For the most part, this film is frenetically edited and full of bruising battle sequences. So I have to say 10 out of 10 for energy, but for me, Warcraft is still a disappointment. The story itself plods along very slowly behind all the pretty pictures. But given that it's inspired by a game which sold millions, you know that it's guaranteed a decent sized audience. This week's award to the busy, biggest weepy of the year goes to Me Before You. It's a touching comedy drama about a small town girl. Game of Thrones' Amelia Clark forms an unexpected bond with a recently paralysed man that she's trying to look after. Here's a look at our two stars getting to know one another. So you're not a classical music person, then? I hate it every minute. Yeah, I could tell. Especially during that oboe solo. There. there was something in my eye. I loved it. Did you? Yeah. Right, well, we better get you in. Wait a minute, Clark. You OK? I don't... I don't want to go in yet. I just want to be a man who's been to a concert with a girl in a red dress. Just a few minutes more. Well, there are lots of laughs in this one, but there are also some real tugs of the heartstrings too. And if you are a sensitive soul, you might be advised to take a box of tissues along to that one. Finally this week, it's the return of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, who are once again lured out of the sewers when their arch nemesis escapes political custody. Our somersaulting foursome are prepared to use any means of transportation at their disposal to stay one step ahead of the game, even if that means leaping into the skies to try and land on an aeroplane. We'll finish this week with a look at this week's box office top five. And at number five this week, George Clooney and Julia Roberts are caught up in a TV studio hostage drama in Money Monster, a daft film, but I thought it was quite good fun. At number four, still doing really well during half term, is the new version of The Jungle Book with Idris Elba among the voiceover characters. At three, another piece of animation, the Angry Birds movie, which is full of bright colours and will delight the youngest of audiences. At number two, Mia Wasikowska and Johnny Depp return to Wonderland in Alice Through the Looking Glass. And at number one, despite some lukewarm reviews from the critics, it's still X-Men Apocalypse. Don't forget, if you like your movies, tune into The Big Picture every Friday at 10 on Big Centre TV, where we bring you reviews of the big screen, the small screen, and also interviews with local movie makers. Welcome back to Saturday's Big Magazine with me, Lee Bannister, your weekend digest from Big Centre. Still to come, Johnny Doom's Music News, Thomas Russell with the Big Centre bookshelf, and I'll be having a look-see into the postbag. But before any of that, let's look back over the past week in history from Doorstep History. It's Tom Wilkinson. Hello. Hello. You alright? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Good, good. Right. What did we have to enjoy last week in history? Last week was... Uh, it wasn't too busy. Mm. There was a few good dates in there. I mean, mm. um, where were we? May the 30th, mm. um, Joan of Arc was burnt at the stake. I remember her. Well, not personally, but I remember the fact that she was burnt at the stake. Yeah. And she was actually quite a tactical genius for a 19-year-old. Really? Oh, she was yeah. only 19? Mm. Do you know, I've always got this vision of her being she was old. burnt at the stake. Good grief. By an English-dominated tribunal. And that was 1431. Right, OK. And in 1536, our old friend Henry. Henry, Henry, Henry VIII. Henry VIII. Henry VIII. Yeah. 
he, he Henry um, he's at it. He's at. He's at it again. <laughs> Is he? Oh god, yeah. dear. He's at it again. He marries uh, Jane Seymour. The actress. Yep. <laughs> Better known as Doctor Quinn, medicine woman. That's right. Yes. <laughs> No, not really. No. Um, who was a lady in waiting to his first two wives? Ah, yes, she was, wasn't she? Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. So what number was she? She's third. She was the third, OK. Well, I'm not going to go through the rhyme again, because I can never remember it. No. I she didn't stay the distance, though, did she? No, she didn't make it to the end. Shame. It's like Game of Thrones, reading up on uh, Henry VIII's <laughs> it love is a life. Bit, isn't it? <laughs> um, 1279 BC. That's a long time ago. Yes, that is a long time ago. Just a bit. Uh, Ramesses II, also known as Ramesses the Great, okay. of the ninth dynasty of, e of ancient Egypt, becomes Pharaoh. Ah, so if he's the Great, was he better than the first? Yeah. Right. A lot better. Mm. Uh, because uh, ancient Egypt entered a t an era of prosperity that it never achieved again under Ramesses II. Ah, right. Which is why there's a lot, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of statues dedicated, would, that were dedicated to Ramesses II mm. that are all across Egypt. Okay, so he's now. well loved then. Yeah, people the like, day. well, people liked him as much as they like any dictator. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, well, but that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, you forget these things. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, okay. And then we'll go right through time to 1859. Okay. And that's when the clock tower at the Houses of Parliament, which houses Big Ben, it's not mm. called Big Ben, it's Big Ben's the bell. That's right. Mm. Uh, that starts keeping time for the first time. Starts ticking. And do you remember what the tower's called? No. <laughs> St Stephen's Tower. St Stephen's Tower, yes. right. I don't know who St Stephen was. I ought to look that one up, haven't I? Look it up for me. You're the, you're the historical bod. Yeah, I'll look it up. <laughs> you can ask me about it next week. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll ask you tomorrow. Uh, well, tomorrow, get the same answer. tomorrow technically is next week. Uh, next up, June the 1st, and uh, 1967, uh, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band is released by the Beatles. What an album. I love that yeah. album, I really do. And the run out groove at the end, which just repeats, 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 and the dog whistle as well. Have you heard that? Yeah. It's even there on the CD. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, 1980, the Cable News Network also known as CNN, begins broadcasting. CNN, the granddaddy of them all, really. There wasn't anything like it before, was there? No, no. Wow. I mean, they, they were the first channel to do uh, rolling news as well. Mm. Mm. Wow. <laughs> yeah, um, June the 3rd. Yes. Edward VIII. Edward VIII. Mm. Duke, of, Duke of Windsor. Ah, yes. He married the divorcee, Wallace Simpson. In what year? After he abdicated. That was 1937. He didn't waste much time, did he? No. Mind you. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I mean, that sort of thing wouldn't be as frowned upon these days as it obviously was well, then. Yeah, because Charles will probably be allowed to be king. Yeah. Because yeah. they've over, they've overturned the whole divorce, marrying a divorcee. Mm. Because well, it's commonplace now. People yeah. marry divorcees all the time. Well, that, that's it, isn't it? Yes. Whether whether you agree or not, again, as we say, times mm. change. Yeah. Yeah. But by all accounts, Wallace Simpson was not. The nicest of people, if we put it like that, or not the friendliest of people. No, but you can't help who you fall in love with, really, can you? That's true. Mm. That's a very, very good point. So we'll finish off with 2012 on June the 4th, mm. and that was our current monarch, Elizabeth II's Diamond Jubilee. Oh, I remember it well, of course. That uh, took, uh, took place outside of Buckingham Palace. Oh, the big concert? Yep, the that big concert. That was cracking, that was. Yep, when yeah. they uh, wheeled Paul McCartney out again to sing the <laughs> same song he sings every time he shows his face yeah, in public. Yeah, but it's fun, isn't it? And Prince Charles called his mum, Mummy. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, fireworks, plane flyovers. Yeah, it was quite a big, uh, I'd, I'd probably go to say that that was probably bigger than the, uh, bigger than the Olympics. You reckon? That celebration for the Queen was. Yeah, I suppose so. Mm. I'd must admit, I'd, I'd love it, but, you know, anything like that. Mm. Um, I'd love it when we can put on a real grand sort of parade and event. I just like the, the um, um, you know, like the pageantry and the, the excitement of it all. Yeah, yeah. and the, se the sort of ceremonial yeah. positions that we have in. That's fine, fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, thank you for that. No problem. Come back again tomorrow? I'll think about it. All right, please yourself. <laughs> and, of course, he'll be uh, looking ahead to next week's historical happenings here on The Big Magazine tomorrow. 
Okay, time to visit Johnny Doom's pad now to see what's happening in the music world. <laughs> Right, it's me, Johnny Doom, from Amped, your weekly rock show, which you can catch at 10 o'clock on Wednesday, 11.30 on Friday, and 10 o'clock on Saturday on Big Centre TV. Watch it. Uh, and here's my pick of the gigs. Uh, go and see Ben Folds uh, in the beautiful surroundings of the Symphony Hall. That's 13th of June. Uh, you've got punk poet and legend John Cooper Clark. That's 17th of June at the Birmingham Town Hall. And uh, McFly, my favourite favourite, 20th to the 22nd of June at the O2 Academy. Here they are with their debut single, Five Colours in a Heart. She's got lip ring and five colours in her head. Not into fashion, but I love the clothes she wears. Just a loner with a sexy attitude. And thanks to Johnny Doom there. He'll be back with Amped on Wednesday nights at 10. Right, now do you uh, like to immerse yourself in a good book? Well, let's find out what's on this week's Big Centre Bookshelf. Here's Tom. Hello, Tom. Hello, sir. Hello, welcome. Welcome, thank you for having me. G good Lord. Yes. What is all this? Slight change of plans. <laughs> uh, after you challenged me to read Mr. Adrian Mole yes. uh, last week, mm. I ordered a copy mm -hmm. at my local uh, stockist and it arrived while I was unfortunately on a short break away. So you didn't get to know Mr. Mole? Not yet. No. But you will? I will, certainly will, absolutely. So mm. we have these. Yes, these. What are they? This stack is mm. called The Inheritance Cycle. Oh. By a young man named Christopher Paolini. Published the first one, and the, the one that I actually read, mm. Aragon, when he was only 16 years old. Oh, okay. This is a first edition hardcover that I bought uh, in my local bookist mm. uh, when it was newly out, and it's much, much read. I can see that. And you, yeah. Uh, and it's, it's sort of classic fan, uh, fantasy. Yeah. The light, hot, proper high fantasy, lots of magic, dragons, etc., mm. that you really don't see a great deal of anymore. Okay. Uh, it is, as I say, magic, elves, dwarves, dragons, very sort of post Tolkien kind of thing. Um, it really is one of those books. Ar Aragon is specifically the one I'm looking at today. Mm. Uh, so you have Aragon, Eldest, Brisinger which sounds like it needs a few more uh, vowels, you'd be right, <laughs> and Inheritance, yeah. which completes the series. Um, it has a lot of very die-hard fans. Hmm. I'm a big fan of the series, even though it is far, 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 far from perfect. Hmm. Um, the first book has been criticised for feeling a bit like Star Wars and having very many elements in common with Star Wars. Hmm. Uh, basically, Star Wars is fantasy in space, hmm. fantasy with spaceships. Um, the story, in brief, is about a young farm boy who finds a dragon egg. Oh, okay. Uh, dragon egg hatches, magic unfolds. Well, in short, <laughs> and unfolds <laughs> into... There's a lot more in there There's, there's a see. lot more than that. <laughs> um, they are very great fun books. They're very, very lovable characters. Um, the Chris, Mr. Paolini, his style evolves so, so much throughout the four books. Mm. Um, they're very, very enjoyable. Like I say, far from perfect. They suffer from specifically these two, Inheritance mm. and Brisinger, from being extremely word heavy, very, very long books that could be easily a couple of hundred pages shorter each. Mm. Each, <laughs> which they are very, very long books. Mm. Um, but they tell a very large story. So that doesn't harm them? There's no sort of waffling in there, do you, would you say? A bit. Ah, okay. they, like I say, they, they could easily be a couple of hundred pages shorter. Mm. Eldest is my favourite in the series. It's the most internally solid. Mm. Um, 
books three and four could be significantly shorter and that would improve them. Hmm. Nice movie covers, I see. Yeah, absolutely. Each cover um, has the face of a dragon. Hmm. So uh, the, you, the title of Aragon is the name of the main character. Hmm. Uh, and his, the dragon he meets, well, the dragon that comes out of his egg is named Sephira because hmm. she's a blue dragon. Uh, it's a world where dragons come in all sizes, shapes and colours. But they are proper dragons, Western style dragons. Hmm. So you see a lot of films these days, like Smaug in, Lord, in uh, the Hobbit films, hmm. wasn't strictly speaking a dragon, it was hmm. a wyvern. Because it had wings, two legs. Okay, proper dragon. Difference. Traditional dragon, as Smaug was originally written, yeah, this is, this is <laughs> it. As dragons were originally conceived, there are two types of dragons hmm. Eastern dragons with two legs, and um, Western dragons with four. All right. But these are traditional dragons in the proper sort of Dungeons and Dragons, mm. Lord of the Rings style. They come in all kind, all shapes and colours. Very, very cool. And each book cover features a different dragon. What would you say the audience is for, for those sort of stories? They're, they're very much pitched at, as young adult books. Mm. But they handle some really mature themes at times, which is really, really strong for, really good for a more mature audience. Mm. I, I read first read Aragon when I was about mm. probably 20. Mm. It took him a very, very long time to write the series. Mm. Um, and it shows in some of the writing, actually. Yeah. Uh, it took him a very, very long time to write them. His style evolved enormously. But they, I've kind of grown with them. Mm. And it, they handle some themes which are, there's a lot of politics in there. There's a lot of like problematic relationships and mm. things like that. That handles really well and does really open it up to all kinds of audiences. So then you've done Aragon. Done Aragon. How does it progress? It, it progresses really well. Um, one criticism of a lot of fantasy and sci-fi I often have mm. is that you have this first story that is quite self-contained, teases a wider world, but doesn't give you much, much crunch about it. Really, mm. it doesn't actually give you much information. Uh, and they struggle to evolve into wider narratives, wider stories. Mm. That is one thing this handles spectacularly well. Mm. Uh, the first book is quite wide ranging in itself. It handles a lot of the world, it does a lot of world building. Mm. Uh, in the, the continent and the world concerned in the books is called Alagasia. Mm. Uh, and it's a large, large continent. They travel a lot in the first book. But um, subsequent books expand out the world enormously and do it really, really well. Mm. Um, it's, it took a long time between book two, which is uh, Eldest, and book three, which is Brisinger. It took him years and years. I can't, couldn't put a figure on how many years it took him to release, mm. but it was really annoying because the end of uh, Eldest is fantastic. Right, so it hooks um, you in then. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, does, Aragon does a fantastic job of world building, really, really makes you want to read mm. the subsequent books, but does very well by itself as a standalone story. So as a standalone story then, you obviously like it. Oh yeah, I have great, great affection for them. What's your score? Score, out of five, I, I give it a solid three and a half. Okay. If, if I would be allowed a half. I'd give it a that three and a half, half yes. uh, because it, it is not without its flaws. Hmm. It's not the best written story in the world. It's obviously written by a very young author hmm. who's still learning the craft of writing. Uh, it, however, it is a very internally consistent world. There are plot holes later on because he does kind of he does shackle himself, shackle hmm. the story a little bit, but it works really, really well. Great stories, very enjoyable. We'll save the future history. We'll maybe mm. get onto that in. Yeah, absolutely. Future weeks. I, I am tempted to retread the all eighteen hundred pages. I think it is. Looks like it. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I think when it comes to Brisingo and Eldest, I might need more than one week, week to read them. Looks like it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I do actually have them all on audiobook, and it takes more than a week. A week more than a week just of constant listening. Yeah. If I was to have them on 168 hours a week, it takes longer than that to read the whole series. Crikey. Okay. Mm. Nice. Well, all right. So, Adrian Mole next week then? Adrian Mole next week, yeah. He's, it uh, has arrived. Sat on my shelf, absolutely. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for that. And, You're welcome. Uh, bring the doorsteps back in in a future week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All well, right. Thanks, Lee.
And so then we've just got time to see what we found in this week's post bag. Now we shared a story on our Facebook page this week about stray horses in our area and the fact that the number of loose horses on our streets has fallen by 32% over the past year. Well, this, as you might imagine, sparked a couple of comments. We Love Stourbridge said, awesome, very interesting, and a slightly worried smiley face. Neil Dyson tagged his friend James Hill in West Bromwich in and said, James, has yours escaped? Lol. I wonder if there's another story there. Neil or James, if you're watching, please let us know what the story behind that is. I'll tell you what though, when I was little, um, my nan and granddad used to live in, in Tipton, in Arthur Road actually, if you know where that is. And um, there were, there's a school opposite over the road now. But um, then it was all open fields and quite often my granddad would open the curtains in the morning to find horses on their front lawn. Um, he either had to call whoever owned them or sort of chase them back over to the field. But uh, yeah, things don't really change, do they? Um, another story on our news this week was about the 25th anniversary since the opening of the Merry Hill monorail. Do you remember that? Now, it's only operated for about six years, but apparently it's well remembered. I, mean, I remember it. Matt Felkin uh, reckons it was pointless. I rode it a few times. OK. Well, you see, to say I remember travelling on it a few times as well. Um, it actually linked the overflow car parks on the waterfront with the main sort of Merry Hill centre. Um, it's useful to come up to Christmas, actually, because you can never park down there. Um, so I was always sad when it went. The stations are still there, by the way, but they're all uh, boarded over. And I always remember um, a few years ago, in a former life, I used to work in radio. I used to work at Beacon Radio over in uh, Wolverhampton. And one of the presenters there, my old mate Graham Hall, always did the announcements on the monorail. And uh, I thought that was quite cool. <laughs> but what do you think? Do you remember the monorail? You know, get in touch with us if you do. Now, this week, uh, Ralph Cox, one of the uh, last survivors of the Normandy landings, sadly died at the grand old age of 101 in a Sheldon hospice. And we had one lovely message from Carol O'Connor Evans, who summed it up for us all. She said, respect, thank you. So say we all. Next, the musician Rebecca Downs came in a few uh, days ago, and she evidently enjoyed herself. She said, thanks to Big Centre and to uh, Des Tong for having me on your show. Well, the show actually went out on Friday, and if you'd like another look, why don't you pop onto our Watch Again page on the website. And if you want to find out more about Rebecca, then you can look her up on Facebook, just do a search for her name, Rebecca Downs. So there you have it. That's what we found in the post bag this week. And if you'd like to uh, get in touch with us, then on social media, we are at Big Centre TV. And you can find us under that name on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, plus, of course, you can always email us postbag at bigcentre.tv. Oh, and don't forget, we've got a couple of other Twitter feeds that you can uh, keep in touch with as well. For sport, it's at Big Centre Sport. For news, it's at Big Centre News. And for what's on, it's at BC underscore what's on. Quite simple. Or if you just want to write to us, then the address, put pen to paper, the address for anything at all, is Big Centre, 14A, Lower Hall Lane, Walsall, WS1, 1RL. And that is your big magazine for Saturday. Now remember, you can catch the big magazine from Big News on Saturdays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. And then we're back with more tomorrow, Sunday, also at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Oh, and if you tune in to tomorrow's programme, then I've got some very special news uh, about our exciting new live sports programme from Edgebaston Cricket Ground. Something to look forward to there. So I do hope you can uh, join us then. From the whole team here, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Try a bit.